Hello everybody and welcome back to this video. So today we're going to take a look at two API gateways, one being API 6 from Apache and one being Kong, and how to do authentication with OpenID Connect with both of them. But without further ado, let's dive in. So let's first take a look uh, at the basics. So basically an RP gateway is nothing more than a reverse proxy like Nginx. In fact, it's basically Nginx on steroids because it's just Nginx enriched with so-called Lua scripts. Lua is some kind of script language that's similar to Python. The API gateway sits between our front-end and our back-end application. And with the plugin for OpenID Connect, it's able to contact the identity provider and then going to the upstream application and connecting to it. With this, it's possible to have OpenID Connect on every application, no matter how it's implemented. It doesn't matter if it's Java, it doesn't matter if it's Python, it can be C Sharp, it can be basically everything. So at, you can simply achieve at an infrastructure level very good authentication. Of course, what the API gateway is also doing is giving you HTTPS. So whenever you take a look into the browser, your traffic is encrypted through the API gateway. It's doing that in tandem with the so-called certificate manager. Um, of course, what we also need is a so-called identity provider. In my case, I'm just using Keycloak here. So what we need at the end of the day is Keycloak. Um, we can apply a Terraform script. You can find all the scripts in the in the Git repository linked into the description. So there is nothing really special here. It would basically just bootstrap key cloak and a Postgres database. A little bit more interesting is that part. It will also create some demo users and this gives you an impression how key cloak can deal with strong pass passwords. So you can have a password policy for the passwords. You can also, if you want to enable something like brute force detection, and what we, of course, also need is a client, a client, an OAuth client we can connect to, and then we have some users here. So this is just as an example. Of course, you're not doing that in production. In production, you would have something like a self-registration process here. So a Keycloak is already set up, and what we also need to set up is our API gateway, which is API 6. Again, that's done by Terraform here. If you want to know more about Terraform, there is another video on my channel. Um, there are some things that need to be tackled here. Nothing too important. Just take a look at the things. One thing to mention that's very important is the so-called proxy buffer size that has to be increased because at the end of the day for the authentication part, there will be a cookie in a session inside your browser. And for this, um, the so-called proxy buffer size needs to be increased. Otherwise, you will get some odd exceptions from the browser because it cannot save the cookie in there. That's important stuff and some other things here. So RP6 is also already working. We can take a look here. If we take a look at K9S, a tool I highly recommend. So it's just a command line tool. We can start from here. And then we see that our IPI6 and also our key cloak is already running. We see that down below. So we have a nice welcome board here. We see key log where we could log in into the administration console. I will do not, not do this for now. So now it's time to bring up an application. So I have some example here like this. And in my folder for the example, I will also just execute Terraform play and it will now roll out the application. It's the person service and the quality service you know, may know from my other demos. For API 6 to work, you need a so-called route. Um, that's a definition that's similar to the ingress definition, but it's a proprietary definition type. So API 6 is not using a standard here. I'm not going too much into the details here. This is basically required to define the route. The important part here is the OpenID Connect plugin. And the nice part about API 6 is that the OpenID Connect plugin is just there out of the box, something that is only partly true for Kong. We will see later. And from here on, it's just a matter of configuration. So with our key clock already set up, we just need to provide the client ID that we have created here in key clock like this then we need to provide the um, the wrong file. We need to provide the 
link to the discovery URL from Keyclock. So this is basically just the your server URL, and this will give uh, will give it the discovery URL where, where it knows where to retrieve all the URLs from, and some additional information. That one is important. So you want to set that so you can have access to the user information inside your backend application. Um, and then one thing that's also important is the so-called session secret. It's not required per se to set it, but if you don't set it, it will be auto-generated for every route. And this means as our session uh, secret is encrypted, that it will do re-authentication on the front end if you don't set it. So every time you switch to a different route, you see in the background that there's some re-authentication going on, which is something you you do not want. So what you really need to do is to set this so-called session secret. That could be a secret that like here is generated by a Terraform, but it's important that it should be the same secret for all the routes you have, because otherwise you will have the same problem that your session is encrypted in a different way, and then it cannot decrypt, and then it will do the re-authentication. But with that being said, that's basically all you need here. And our example should now already be running. I will open that in an incognito window. So let's just access. So what's happening? So we are trying to access our protected resources here. And what's then happening is that we see a, a redirect. So the API gateway already now catches up and says, hey, you're not, you're not authenticated. And it will redirect via the OpenID Connect flow to our Keycloak application. So now we can log in. And we are logged in. And from here on, all calls are authenticated. This also means if there is another application protected via OpenID Connect, like our Kali service, we are also already locked in. Okay, let's get back here. Um, yeah, we see we can do some calls here. And if we take a look, my window is always in the way here now. Um, if we take a look here, we see what's happening. So this is the session mentioned earlier. So the authentication uh, is stored in the session and that session is encrypted in this cookie. What's also interesting to know is if we do request here and we provided the X user info, we see that every time now I access my application, I see that I see the that I see the logged in user here because the user info is passed to the backend application and then the backend application is able to get that from the user info. This means, of course, if we would log in with another name, like the very interesting user2, two, user2, two, I'm pretty much that I just typed it wrong. Okay, now I'm user2 and we should be able to see now we are user2. So before we take a look at Kong, let's take a look at some more basics here. So this is basically the authentication flow we just saw. We enter our credentials. From our credentials, the gateway will resolve a one-time token via the OpenID Connect flow. Um, the one-time token will be resolved into the JWT, and that will be stored in the session cookie we just saw earlier, and then we can access our application. So continuing with Kong, things are very similar. Of course, instead of deploying the API 6 gateway, we need to deploy the Kong gateway. Um, it's in theory very similar. We have again the same proxy buffer size stuff here that we need to, to, to configure. There is, however, one slight change. So Kong out of the box does not provide OpenID Connect support. It only provides that in the enterprise edition, and that's something you have to pay for. So if you want to have it in Kong, you need the community plugin. Unfortunately, that's a little bit more complicated than expected, but you have the recipe right here now. So this works like this. There is a plugin that you can download. There are, of course, multiple plugins, multiple forks, but that's the one I use. You can just copy then the code here which are basically just Lua scripts. And then, unfortunately, you also need to create a Docker file. So what will the Docker file do? It will load the latest Kong version, 
it will put the plugin source into a specific folder for Kong to pick it up. And there is another odd change. So there are conflicting library versions currently going on because Lua is also using the session and OpenID Connect plugin. Um, lucky for you, that's provided in this, in this recipe. So you, all you need to do is to have the Docker file, and then you can create the Docker file and push it to a registry. Or if you are golden with that, you can also use the one I already provided for that. Of course, if there is a new version for Kong, you need to do that again. And this leads to a slight change here, because this basically means that we need to overwrite our image name. Fortunately, it's working just like this, so we can just provide another repository. That's my specific one, built on the original one, and then like this, and that's it. And then we already have Kong running here. Kong is also a little bit more friendly on the startup phase, so it uses a little bit less of resources, and it starts a little bit faster, and of course, a lot of people um, like Kong better than the APS6 one. Other than that, if we take a look at our person example again, it's very simple. I will again roll it out with Terraform. And now we don't have a route, we have an ingress YAML. Um, just to note that uh, Kong supports two things. It supports the old ingress standard, but it also supports the new gateway standard. We are using the ingress standard here. It looks like this, just take a look on your own. There are things like strip path that need to be in there. You can take a look into the documentation how this is set up because the ingress definition differs a little bit from the original engine X one that you know. So just take a look in the documentation. And then again, we need to provide our plugin. There is a difference with uh, API 6 because, because plugins need to be defined and then they need to be attached. So there's an annotation for that. But other than that, it's very simple, uh, very similar. The plugin is also very simple. We again have our client ID or our secret here. All the other things we have in API 6 are, are defaults. We again need to define our discovery URL. It's important to note, however, that this is the internal URL, while in API 6, we are using the external URL. Don't ask me why it's like this, but this is why I see we have here the ingress host. So that's the one we want to access from the browser. And here we have the one in, inside the cluster. And then there is something additional you, you might only need if you want to use things like Postman for testing, you can also authenticate via JWT. But that being said, there is not much of a difference here. So now, if we just go and open our application like this, and I go here, you see it looks very similar, different gateway, same application, and voila, we are authenticated. And that's it for Kong. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.